In this tutorial, I will show you how to add reference images and background images into Blender. And using reference images and background images in Blender can be very helpful when you're modeling more complex objects. So for demonstration in this video, I'm going to be using this free car blueprint reference image. And this is a free image from pixabay.com. So I'll have the link in the description if you'd like to download it. Or of course, you can use your own reference of whatever you want to model. And also after this tutorial, if you'd like to learn how to add in video reference, then I will have a separate tutorial on that. So the link will be in the description and a card right up there on the screen when that video is released. So to start off, I'm just going to delete everything and I'm just going to add like a monkey head just so that we have an object that we can use to interact with the references. So I am now going to press the one on my numpad and that is going to take me to the front view. So to add in the reference images or the background images, I can press shift A and I'm going to go right here to image and you you can see that there is reference and background. Now the reference option and the background option are pretty much the same exact thing. There are a few different settings that have been changed, but they are both the same thing. So I'm going to first click on this reference right here and Blender's file browser is going to appear and then you can just select whatever image you want to use. And then I'm going to click on load reference image. If you have multiple images for the front view and side view and top view and all that, that's totally fine. You can add in those different images images. Uh, in this case, it is one image and it has the front, back, top, and side, but you can also add in multiple images with all the different views. Now, before we go over the reference image settings, there is another way to add in references. Instead of pressing shift A and going right here to image, you can just click and drag and you can drop the image into Blender from your file browser. Now, you may have noticed that whenever we add in reference images, the reference image is always pointing directly at us. So on default, the reference image Images are going to be aligned to your view. If you don't want the images to be aligned to your view, you can also press Shift A and you can again go right here to image and click on reference. And then again in Blender's file browser, you can select the reference. Now before adding in the reference, you can go right up here to the side panel and you can click on align to view. So I'm going to click on this to actually turn it off and then I can click on load reference image. And also if you just drag and drop in a reference and you want to bring it back to its default position in the very center there, you can select the object and then you can press Alt R and Alt G and Alt S. That is going to clear all the transforms of the object. Now, if you want to select a reference image and move it around, that's really easy to do. You can just move it around like any other object in Blender. So you can select the object and then you can press G to grab and S to scale and R to rotate and you can move it around. So what I'd like to do is rotate this up so that I can align the front reference to the front. So just like any other object, I can press R to rotate. I can hit X to rotate it on the x-axis and then I can type 9, 0 and enter to rotate it over by 90 degrees. So now it is pointed forwards. And just like any other object in Blender, if you want to duplicate the reference, you can just press Shift D to duplicate it and then it's going to duplicate the reference. All right, so let's go over some of the reference settings. So if you select the reference, you can go right here to the object data properties. So if you set the depth to default, it's just going to act like a normal object. So this monkey head is in front, so it's going to cover the reference, but then this reference is in front of the other monkey head, so this reference is going to cover the back monkey. If I change the depth to front, then the reference image is going to be in front of all of the objects. So this can be very helpful if you want to always be able to see the reference image through the objects. Now there is also a back, and this is going to do the exact opposite. So even though this monkey head is much farther away, it appears as though the monkey head is in front of the reference. And again, this can be very helpful if the reference image is getting in the way of your modeling, you can just change it to back and then you're always able to see the 3D mesh. Now the next option is the side and this is going to determine whether you can just see the front or just see the back or see both of them. And why this might be really helpful is if you have a front reference and a back reference. So right now the side is set to both. So if I press one on the numpad, that's gonna go to front view. But if I press control one on the numpad, that's gonna go to back view. Now you can see that this is showing the front 
front of the car, but on the back here, I wanna see the back of the car. So what I could do is I could just click on front, and now if I press one on the numpad, I can only see this reference image from the front, but if I press control one to go to back view, I can't see the reference. So then what I could do is I could press shift D to duplicate, R to rotate, and I could rotate this on the Z axis. I could type in 180 for 180 degrees and then hit enter, and I could stick this right here. So now if I press one on the numpad, that's gonna go to front view, and then I can press control one and that's gonna go to the back view. Now there also is the show in orthographic and perspective. I like to turn the perspective off and that way when I'm just looking around here in the 3D space, I can't actually see the references in the perspective view unless I press five to go to the orthographic view or press one or three or seven. And then there is also this handy opacity setting. So if I don't wanna be able to see it that well and see through it, I could just turn the opacity down. After you have the reference images all set up, I don't don't really want to select the reference images. So what you can do is you can make the reference images so you can't select them. So to do this, I'm going to be using the outliner. So the outliner is right up here in the corner. So if I go right here to the collection, I can click on this arrow to open this up and you can see that there are these three empties. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the first reference, hold down the shift key and select the other two reference images. I now want to move them to their own collection. So to move them to their own collection, I can press the M key and then I'm just going to click on new collection and I can just rename this to references and then to create the collection I can just click on OK. So now right here we have the default collection and then we have a different collection for the references. If I don't want to see them I can just click on this check mark right here to uncheck the collection or I could click on the eye to just hide it from our view. And then also I've turned off some of the filters but if you click right up here on the filter so the one that I want to show you is this filter right here and this is the selectable filter. So I can click on that to turn it on in the filter settings. So if I now click on this little arrow icon to turn it off on the reference collection, I now am not able to select the reference images. So once you've set the reference images up, you can click on that and make it not selectable. And then that way you don't need to worry about accidentally moving the references around. I did wanna show you how you can add reference images into the camera. So if you have a camera and you are in the camera's view, you can click and drag and drop the reference image from your file browser into the camera. And you can see that it's added the reference in the camera's view. Now, another way to add this in is by going right over here to the object data properties with the camera selected, and you can check mark the background images. So right here, you can see I've already added this one, but I could also just click on the exit button to get rid of that and then I could click on add image and then I could click right here to open up the image. And then just like the other references, there's some other settings here like the rotation and the scale. And you can again change the depth here with back and front or the opacity as well. So the settings are pretty much the same with the background images in the camera. All right, so I'm now gonna show you how to align up each view so that they're all aligned and then you can actually start the modeling process. So I'm just gonna open up the references collection right here and I actually want to click on this button right here so that I can select the references. And then I'm just going to delete the other references. So I'm going to delete this one. Let's go to the side view and I'm just going to delete this one. So we just have this single reference. So I'm going to press one on the numpad to go to the front view. And then I'm going to press G to grab. And I'm going to stick the reference right here, pretty much in the center of the grid, in the center of the 3D space. So what I want to do is I want to put the car reference on the top of the axis. So we have the y-axis and the x-axis. So again, if I press one on the numpad for the front view, I want to bring the reference down so that the bottom of the wheels are right down there on the x-axis and the y-axis. And then I'm also gonna bring this side to side and I wanna stick the car reference right there in the center going along the z-axis. And again, if you have multiple reference images, like if these are each of their own image, then you can just press shift A. And again, you can go right here to image and just add in all the different references. In this case, these are all on one image. So I'm just gonna be duplicating this image. So now I wanna add in the side view reference. So I'm gonna press shift D to duplicate. Then I can press R to rotate and I'm gonna hit Z to rotate it on the z-axis. And I can type in nine, zero and enter to rotate that over by 90 degrees. So now I want to bring this to the center so I can press G to grab. I'm going to bring it over on the x-axis and just stick it there in the center. And then I can press three on the 
numpad for side view. And you can see here is the reference. So again, I want to match this up so that the wheels are right down there on the grid. And then I can also bring this over and just kind of stick it right there. And then I also want to add the top reference. So again, I'm going to press shift D to duplicate. And I want to rotate this one on the Y axis. And then again, I can type in nine zero and enter to rotate that by 90 degrees. So then I can press seven on the numpad to go to top view. And you can see that I'm not able to see the reference. So for the top one, I'm just going to click on both on the sides here. And that way I can see both sides of the reference. So then back here on the top view, I just want to move this over and I can bring this over and I just want to align this about in the center. So just like that. And then I want to add one more reference and that is on the back view. So I'm going to press one for the front view. I'm just going to select this reference right here and I can press shift D to duplicate. Let's rotate this on the Z axis and I can type in 180 and enter. So then to go to the back view, I can press control one. That'll go to back view and then I can press G to grab and I just want to stick this here. And again, we want the wheels to be on the X axis and then we want to put the car right there in the very center on the Z axis. And I can now start modeling the car. So for modeling a car, I would just like add a plane and I would also give this plane a mirror modifier. So I would delete one of the sides and then I could add the mirror modifier. And then I can first go to top view and I can bring this over and I can kind of fit it to the hood of the car. Then I could go to side view and I could bring this up and kind of rotate this over and fit it to the hood of the car. And then I can press one on the numpad to go to front view. And again, I can just kind of align this, maybe bring this down a bit. And again, I can go to side view and then I can just select the side here of the plane and I can extrude it out and bring that down and I can fit it to the reference. So you can see right here we're on top view and I need to rotate this over so I can kind of rotate this to fit the car hood and I can go to side view and I can fit the shape of it. And I can just continue to do that and create the base of the car. So that is how to use reference images in Blender. They can be very helpful when you are 3D modeling complex objects. And if you'd like to watch my tutorial on how to add in animation videos as reference, then I will have a link in the description and also it'll be right up there on the end screen when it is released. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you for watching.